All right, guys, so on the screen, you guys are probably going to see something that looks semi similar to a Gmail app. Um, and quite frankly, you know, it's not supposed to resemble Gmail. Um, I think just the concept of having an email system that can be a little more encrypted and have these AI features, which I feel like Gmail or even like Outlook would already have by now, right? That's why I came up with this idea. And I'm not afraid to share it because I think this is a really good one. Um, but you can see it's a basic, you know, email provider. It is currently not deployed to the web, but we do have the email inbox section, right? You can click on it. We can view it. You can see I gave this a very modernized look compared to your standard Gmail, right? So you can see you can start it, you can forward you can archive we can delete it if we want to you know all that stuff is programmed and we're using react within bolt.new then we have our favorite tab our sent drafts archives the one i just archived and then we have one that just deleted you can see it updates in real time and we'll go here and i'm actually going to go ahead and just delete it and you can see that number change over here on the side now the main thing about this app that I thought would be cool, right? I'm not afraid to give this out because I feel like it's not something too crazy, but maybe, just maybe, if no one else builds it, we can create like a Chrome extension of some sort using this idea. But you can see that I created Onyx Mail. Onyx Guard is an advanced AI scanning for sensitive data and potential security risk in real time. Essentially what a anti-malware or virus system already does but within your email system all right we can see credit card patterns detected um, from who it's two minutes ago we can turn it on or off um, we have uh, an api key that we can actually implement so we can pretty much see everything that's going on in real time but we would have to use uh, an llm of your choice so we can pretty much use you know uh, Llama, Claude, OpenAI. We can use any API key to make this run, to let the AI do the data leak prevention, right? So that's available there, and you can see there's actually programming in the back end, but I haven't added any of that yet. And then looking at the other feature that I thought of, it's called Smart Sort, right? Let AI automatically categorize your emails into relevant folders in prior priority levels right so automatically letting ai sort your emails right because like who really cares about all the stuff that you subscribe to you know if you're a person that likes to subscribe to stuff and sometimes you just forget about it and let's say you start getting these emails you just keep coming in and you know going one by one to unsubscribe to all those emails honestly just sucks in my opinion and then we have the ai assistant which is a smart email composition tool um, you can actually already get Chrome extensions that help you write better emails. And I'm not sure if Gmail has that in their in their app yet, but that's there as well. And you can actually click on it. And even just looking at the UI, right? Like there's obviously some things here that we gotta, gotta fix. Obviously th these two are overlapping, right? But it does work. And here's the newsletter manager that I was mentioning. You know, we can literally just click on all of the domains that we're getting and just unsubscribe like you see how fast that was like i personally like sign up for deals when they offer you the 10 percent, whatever right but like unsubscribing things like this it just it's such a no-brainer i just don't know why gmail doesn't have this or any email provider to be to be frank with you right at the end of the day they do make money on receiving the emails from these business emails right because they're paying you know Google X amount to have that email so it, it makes sense that they haven't added this but you know I personally would charge five bucks a month for this app maybe ten bucks right um, but now let's go into the cost right I actually went ahead and went over the numbers of what would it cost to run an app like this um, and just for a basic setup right these are just estimated numbers just to run it at a capacity of 5,000 users 
we be estimating about $500 to $1,000 just on hosting with AWS or GCP, um, email sending using SendGrid or Amazon SES would be about 100 to 300 bucks. The database um, using the SQL would be 200 to $400. Uh, storage, you know, because you gotta be able to store these emails in the cloud and allow users to have a cloud capacity. We'd be looking at about $100 to $300 the CDN of 50 to 100 bucks, the SSL certificates, you know, 10 to 20 bucks, um, the DDoS protection, you know, anywhere from 100 to 200, probably even more. I feel like with email uh, sending, you know, it's very sensitive data, so you would have to make sure that all that stuff is right in the back end. Otherwise, you know, it's just gonna cause a disaster. Um, and then as far as monitoring tools, I believe that's more on like the API side, depending how often these AI features are being used, right? Because I actually have this connected to the OpenAI API key. So I'm actually gonna go in and show you guys just kind of my usage on like two apps that I've been, you know, kind of dabbling with just to see how much it costs. And it obviously depends too on the model that you're using, you know, like GPT 4.0 is probably the, the cheapest one you could use. Um, so that also depends. But I think it's an incredible time to, to live in because you know, it's not even about who can code the fastest. It's not about who can market the fastest. It's about who can solve the problems now, right? Like someone like me that is very creative and is very inspired by problems. And I like to solve those problems, right? I've always naturally been that way. I've always had that mindset. Having these features and these tools feels like magic, right? Two years ago, this wasn't available to us. And now, the time now is who has the best ideas, who can solve the next problem. It's not about who can code, you know. Obviously, being able to write and understand what we're doing here within Boltanio, right? How is packaging all of the files, all the JSON, the CSS, all the basics, right? I think that's still great to learn, right? But times are changing. The time is now to start creating, start learning how to use these LLMs, how to use these tools, because if you have an idea, you can literally create it now. 